Susan Hill Smith is a mom, a wife, and a journalist. And now she's adding Alva Palm's city councilwoman to her resume. In this edition of Quentin's Close Ups, I sit down with Susan Hill one on one. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Well, Susan, it is so good to see you. You too. We go a long way back. We sure do. You invited me to become an ink contributor for Pulse and Corey when I was in high school. Right. I was a freshman at Burke High School. Right. And all I wanted to do was focus on the Pulse and Corey. Uh huh. And it was there where I flunked my ninth grade year. Uh, I didn't know about <laughs> oh, that. Oh yes. Oh yes. And it, you know, obviously, you were the one who actually taught me how to write for the newspaper. Well, I don't know if I can take all the credit for that, <laughs> but I know you were already engaged with um, TV news right. even oh, before yeah. that. Oh so. yes. I was impressed by, you know, your um, go get them kind of spirit, and you did a great job for us. Oh, so. thank you. Yeah. I still have the archives and everything. Do you? That's <laughs> awesome. I still have, uh, I kept copies of my favorite yeah. uh, editions that we put out together. Oh, so. good. Um, yeah, that was an exciting time, and I, I miss, I, I, I'm glad that I'm able to keep in touch with a lot of the oh, yes. contributors that we had through the That's years. Right. Now you guys are all. Grown up. Yeah, grown up now. Ooh, yeah. And look what I'm doing, interviewing. I know. I never thought I would be doing something like this. There you go. So oh, here. I did. Ah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That, that's amazing. And I still have the one from 2000 when I was up at the North Charleston Coliseum and I had to do the, uh, you know, a story about the concert, Z93 concert. Oh, okay. And we did that little story about it. And my big story about my time at Channel 5, it uh -huh. was behind the television news and I took a, a picture on the set of Channel 5's news set. Oh, right. Yeah, when yeah, I was entering there. Yeah. yeah. And thank you for helping me out with that. Oh, sure, of course. But these days, you've taken a turn. <laughs> I have. What got you from being a journalist, a mom, and a wife, to now a councilwoman for all the moms? Well, um, that's a great question and not one that I necessarily um, expected myself. Mm. Um, but we've lived, uh, my husband and I lived on the Isle of Palms for 23 years right. now. And my background is heavily in journalism yes. and still uh, communications, okay. but I do more healthcare communications. Mm -hmm. But I still do some magazine and occasional news, newspaper reporting. Um, and I had been covering city council right. for the island newspaper. Right. And so um, it just seemed to work out and seemed like a good idea that I had this great skill set from being a reporter yes. in the past That's and right. covering boards and councils um, and being a good communicator right. that I could apply that um, to, to being on Isle of Palm City Council. And it just seemed like it would be uh, a good way for me to make a positive impact. Uh, yeah, and a lot of people don't know, but you were one of the top reporters at the Pulse and Courier. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure. There's a, there are a lot of great reporters at the Pulse and Courier. Still, still so. to this day. Mm -hmm. Well, let me turn to your election. Your husband, Mick, said this on Facebook. He said this quote, Happy times at Susan Hill Smith <sighs> campaign headquarters. She crushed it. According to unofficial results, tabulated by the Island, the Island Eye News, Susan did so well, she avoided being in a runoff. So tell me this, who was Susan Hill Smith as a political candidate? Well, I think I had a lot of advantages since we had lived there for so long. Yes. Lots of great positive relationships yes. with people throughout the community. And since we are parents of three children, right. we knew a lot of people mm -hmm. through, through school relationships. Yes. Um, so, so that was a big boost. Um, and also just, I think, you know, my from being a journalist right. and being able to work with people on different sides of different right. issues in a fair way. Right. I had good relationships um, for, uh, on lots of different sides. Right. So I think that helped as well. And hopefully people just saw in me the ability to um, be a good communicator and also be able to look at lots of information and make good decisions. And speaking of which, the Isle of Palms, you said this quote, I still can't believe how lucky my husband and I were to land on the Isle of the Palms at the start of our management marriage 23 years ago. In the past four months since we launched my campaign for city council at the island's July 4th golf cart parade, I have become even more strongly connected to the community. Hmm. 23 years ago to right now, what is the biggest difference in your mind when you think of the Isle of the Palms? Oh, the island has changed so much in terms of um 
and, and I'm familiar with the history because I've written about the history. Yes. Um, and even in just the time that we've been there, you've seen this shift from um, smaller houses to bigger houses right. and and really large houses that are used for rentals, right. um, short-term rentals for people who are coming for beach vacations mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Which is not to say in the past it's always been something of a beach vacation right. destination, um, but that's been a shift um, at least in part of the island. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still this great residential community that's yeah. there right. and um, that's a lot of what the people who live there year round want to continue to protect that mm -hmm. and make sure that um, people can't, it is realistic for people to be able to live there right. and have everyday lives and live there year round, which is, it's a pretty incredible thing mm -hmm. to live in that location um, like that. And we feel super fortunate. Um, but so there's been some changes along those lines, uh, but th there's still that possibility that you can have a residential community um, and enjoy everyday life there. Yeah. Hmm. How much do you fear about the future of the Alp Palms after what you just told me? Well, th there are some things that we definitely need to be proactive about, and um, that includes, and I'm sure, uh, other low country communities also are looking at things like uh, drainage right. and um, how rising sea levels um, are going to impact right. flooding, oh, yes. those kinds of issues. I mean, this summer, right. I think, or really the past couple of years, we've all had issues mm -hmm. that we, you know, hopefully. Um, we can get ready for and be as prepared as possible for. Right. So I definitely think that those are some things that we need to think about. Plus, um, the way the, the whole low country community is growing in terms of population, right. um, many of those people want to come to the beach, mm -hmm. even just for the day. Right. So we also have to look at issues of how we best handle um, people who are coming, the day trippers, oh, yes. as we say, yeah, um, <laughs> who come and bring traffic and mm -hmm. parking issues and those kinds of things. And, and we need to find that balance mm -hmm. um, of being welcoming, but also making sure that it's a good experience for visitors and residents alike. Sure. And you also said this too. You said this as well. The best part of this process has been the many conversations I've had with islanders about the lives here and your hopes for our future. Mm -hmm. What were those conversations that is was like in your mind? Um, well, it just varied from person to person because mm -hmm. everybody has a different story about how they got there right. and um, you know why they're there and what they. Uh, but almost universally, everybody loves living there and really enjoys it, even though we do have challenges well, that yeah. we have to deal with. Sure. Um, but yeah, it was just great to get to know people, and some people have lived there, you know, maybe grew up there, wow. um, and had great stories to tell. Some people have, you know, like we have, raised right. their families right. there, but are now have grandkids wow. that they're, you know, have come visit them. So, um, so every story is different. One thing that's really great that I would found out um, even more so during the campaign and know came to know that there's really been a resurgence of families right. oh, yes. with younger children who have moved to Isle of Palms. Um, and that's fantastic too, I think, because that helps keep the island uh, a residential community. You're right about that. You talk about families. Let me go to this quote you said. You said the following on your website quote, families help make this island a vibrant residential community and they should be directly represented in our government. My husband and I are engaged parents of free island children ages 12, 16, and 18. None of the current council members or any other candidates have kids under the age of 18. So is this what's been missing from the Isle of Palm City Council? Well, currently, now, that's not to say in the, previously, we have had members who had children that were okay. growing up, and they're growing up years. Okay. But uh, at least for the past four years, we haven't had that. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and none of the other council candidates that were running this time around had kids under the age of 18 either. And I think it's just an important demographic for our island. Um, and we are still connected to many families mm -hmm. who have kids, um, and including 
uh, families who have even younger kids than ours, um, that we can help be that connection for them in city government. You talk about your skills, obviously, in journalism a few minutes ago during the interview. You said the following quote, I will listen, question, dig, soak in information, and consider all sides and make it proactive, physically sound decisions. So what are you listening to? What are you soaking in? What are you thinking for when you look for answers and solutions to problems on the Isle of Palms? Well, uh, for the size community in terms of full-time residents that we have, um, is actually on the smaller side. Mm -hmm. um, but the scope of what Isle of Palms has to deal with in terms of issues is fairly large because we have to deal with things like beach uh, issues and beach renourishment. Um, also, you know, we have a marina that was a big part of this past election. Right. Um, uh, there's also, uh, you know, we have this residential community, but we also have a very active um, commercial district right. and vacation right. resort area. Right. Right. So there's so many different things that um, I think you need to have that ability to be able to get all sure. that information and, and analyze it and right. make good decisions. So, um, and ask quite a good questions along the way to make sure you're getting good information. And tell me, how is it like to be Susan Hillsmith now, a political candidate? You're now a politician as well, mom, wife, and so a journalist. Have you been able to soak this in? Um, yeah, it's been, well, I feel really fortunate that we didn't have to, I didn't have to be involved in the runoff. Wow. So, um, and that was really pushing me towards the end of the election. I wanted to lock it down right. and, and make sure that we won um, on November 7th and was really happy about that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll chalk that up to just our, our great supporters. Um, just well, There's so many wonderful families that mm -hmm. we know out there. Oh, so many people who are um, just great giving, active mem members of the right. community right. Um, that we're connected with. And so I can't take you know, all the credit for it. I, as I mentioned to my husband, right. um, you don't get elected by yourself. It has to happen with um, support. Sure. So, so yeah, so that's been wonderful and yes. just seeing people and yes. seeing how excited they are um, about the yes. fact that we won is, the past two weeks has been really great. Well, um, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really yes. awesome. And he'll be here to take the first picture when he gets some uh, yeah, and, and I have to give credit to my husband for, um, for, uh, for being really supportive. Yeah. And uh, he is a photographer. Yes. So um, I'm, we've been always blessed to yes. have great, great photos yes. along the way. That's so. right. He's one of the best. Yes, I, I would agree with yeah. you on that. <laughs> Well, God, this is so great. I, I hope we can do another one again. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we got a lot of stuff going on on yeah. Palms, yes, so um, we'll be happy. And I think one of the one of the big things that we um, should be doing is is be communicating with the public mm -hmm. about what's going on in yes. our community, Absolutely. and and actually as it affects other pieces of the Low Country as well. That's right. Taking a page from that journalism book. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so. Susan Hill-Smith, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Thank you. It's been great to spend time with you again. Likewise. Okay. And thanks for starting my writing career. Uh, of course. <laughs>